Brexodus, the final video. And what the dickens has happened? We've only been out of the country a few months, about seven or eight, maybe more, but things have changed. This is the final Brexit video uh, where I tell you about how much it cost us to travel up through France and back into the UK. I'm also going to look at whether it would have been cheaper to travel from um, to do the Spain to England, the Portsmouth to Santander or Bilbao crossing rather than drive through France. But before I do that, We've come back to the UK after being away for several months and um, some rather, I don't know, I don't know whether it's shocking or surprising or what, things have happened. Let me explain. I uh, had to take a trip into uh, the local town to uh, pick up some, some more drugs for my illnesses. No, nothing catching, don't worry. Um, but anyway... Um, uh, first thing, a bit of a surprise, a very, very pleasant surprise, got on the bus and I can now pay on the bus using NFC. That's uh, using my phone or, you know, the with your card, with your, you know, your touch to pay thing. Uh, or Apple Pay, apparently they take that as well. So that's pretty good and I could see that coming eventually and finally it's, it's here. It's, it, it, it's brilliant. Um, but that wasn't the thing that really surprised me, is that after I'd been to the chemist to pick up the stuff, I thought, hmm, nearly lunchtime, near enough. So um, I knew there was a McDonald's just um, down the road, so I wandered off down to McDonald's, and um, lo and behold, they've updated that McDonald's, and they have the touch screens in there that I'm seeing all over Spain and everywhere else, and so... Um, the ordering screens which are great but get this they bring the food to the table seriously it's mcdonald's it's a fast food place now you take a little plastic thing with a number on and you put it in on the screen on the ordering thing and you go and sit down at a table and you wait for your food you don't wait long it's still pretty quick it's probably quicker than standing in a great big long queue um, and then get into the counter and standing there waiting for them to do your order. Um, it's quicker. Well, I think it's quicker. Um, and it's great because you know how it is. You get your food from the counter and you go wandering around and you can't find a blinking table. Um, everywhere's full and it's all a big nightmare and someone knocks into you and your coat goes over and spills everywhere. No, nah, none of that now. Now they bring you the food, and with a smile. That was disconcerting. But anyway, <laughs> right, um, that's not what you're here for. <laughs> you're here to hear about the costs. Okay, driving through France. We used, now don't forget, I have a, um, a V10 8.6 litre engine, um, pulling seven and a half tonnes, so my fuel costs, and I do about eight to nine miles per gallon, so my fuel costs are going to be higher than what yours are. Probably. Depends what you're driving. But however, I do drive on LPG, which is a lot cheaper, or GPL. Is it LPG or GPL in the UK? It's LPG, it's GPL abroad. Oh, really? Anyway, sorry about that. Um, so... I don't know, maybe it won't be cheap, maybe yours would be a similar price. However, the cost was, excuse me while I look, we spent £311 on fuel, and that's the French bit. Not I'm excluding Spain, because you'd have to do Spain if you were going off the ferry at Santander anyway. So I've only looked at the French cost. So £311 in fuel. The airs that we stayed at, the ones where we had to pay, I think it was all of them in France, whatever, but no it wasn't, 
sorry, because we stayed at Le Mans, didn't we? Yes, um, but the airs, the total cost of that for the time that we spent in France, which was a lot shorter than we intended. I did intend to take a long, slow trip up through France. It didn't work out that way. So we're back a month early, whatever. Um, but that was £82. Now, tolls. <laughs> yes, we know that French tolls are expensive compared to everywhere else. And... Um, I had envisage, I had visions of it costing more than um, the fuel, but it didn't. It came to 196 euros, so about, um, we we'll call it 196 pounds just for the sake of it, because I can't be bothered to work out the difference. So it's about 196 quid in tolls. Um, that hurt. But it is what it is. But it, it was that or take non-toll roads, which are not motorways. It would have taken us a lot longer. We would have had a lot more problems. Don't forget, now all those, all you guys that are going out there, oh, we never use the tolls, we don't have any problems, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're not driving 11 metres of monster that's about that much wider than a lorry. Um, so trust me, it's not worth the aggravation. <laughs> I'd rather pay the tolls. Now the ferry cost. The day we travelled back was during half term week. Really wish somebody had told us. Um, it so it cost us. It cost us two hundred and thirteen pound. So that's a one way ticket, Calais to Dover. Um, not too bad, I suppose. Um, can deal with it. Um, but if it had not been half term week, it would have reduced the cost, I would have thought, by quite a bit. So, overall, the cost to travel through France and over into the UK was about 800 quid. Um, to be honest, wasn't as much as I expected. Not much, not, not much more, but hey... So what about this difference between if I'd driven through France or I'd gone the ferry crossing from San, from Portsmouth to saint Antoine or Bilbao? Well, we had tickets booked, originally booked um, in May um, and it was actually for return. So, and that was about 1,600 quid. So in actual fact... So this is this was one way. So it's half that. So it's eight eight. So half of the sixteen hundred is eight hundred. So actually, there's very little difference in cost as to whether you travel through France or take the ferry crossing uh, from uh, England to Spain. So it's down to what you. I, I think because that's been negated, that causes a bit more of a. Well, what do you want? What do you want from? Do you want to go through France? Do you want to stop off in France and enjoy France and the things it has to offer, or would you rather just get to Spain? Um, because if that's the case, there's no need to bother with France. The cost is going to be about the same. Um, obviously, if you're travelling with pets, there's a that which we do. We we've got the two girls, so you need to consider um, the difference there when you travel from when you do the. Um, Dover Calais crossing, they stay in the vehicle. They're only there for 90 minutes, but they stay in the vehicle, um, which my girls actually prefer. Because the other return, because if you go via um, uh, Portsmouth to Santander or Bilbao, um, they have to have, they, you either have to pay extra for a pet cabin, and I understand it's quite a bit extra. Or um, they have to have going to kennels, which is on right at the top of the uh, the ship, and they hate it because you're on that boat for twenty four hours. It is literally a twenty four hour crossing. It takes twenty four hours. Um, so the other thing to consider: Do you want to just sit back, chill for twenty four hours, put your feet up, do nothing, read a book, watch some stuff on your phone, or whatever? Or would you rather um, drive that distance, do all the driving, visit other places in France, but take longer to get there? 
I suppose if you've got a limited amount of time and Spain is your main object, you're probably better off take, doing the um, the Portsmouth to Santander route because it's just one day you're going to lose. Um, otherwise, go through France, it's going to take you at least three or four days, maybe more if you stop. It, it, it depends how long you want to drive each day. So there it is. Our Brexit journey is totally complete. We're back a month early um because I, I, because france didn't work out the way i expected it but hey that's just life doesn't always work out the way you expect it some things it happens that way so now it's just a question of we now have to we still none the wiser as what's going to happen with with um the dreaded brexit and we're just gonna have to wait and see and how it affects us now I'll, I'll, i'm sure i'll do some more videos on how it affects us when we know how it will affect us if it's going to affect us at all so anyway hopefully I'll be doing a really really happy video saying um doesn't affect us nothing's going to happen um and uh, all you people that were telling me that i'm an idiot for coming back early because nothing's going to change you were right i hope you were right um but if not i'll let you know how it actually affects us has full-time living in a motorhome and preferring to stay in Europe. I mean, if we have to spend a lot more time in England, we have to spend a lot more time in England. In which case, I'll do videos um, of more places in England, as I have planned for this area where I am now. I'm not going to tell you where it is yet, because um, I haven't done the video yet. <laughs> no, I've not done it yet. Um, great little site we found, absolutely fantastic, and I'm looking forward to showing you around and showing you around the area, but that will become in future videos. So in the meantime, take care. If you haven't done so, please click the subscribe button. And also if you press that little bell icon, when I do those videos where I am and the area and stuff like that, you'll get notifications. So um, that'd be handy. Save you having to keep an eye on my channel. My channel will, will tell you when I do stuff. Um, if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate them and they do help my channel uh, grow. So, um, so yeah, thanks very much. Um, anyway, look, I hope where you are is warm and nice because here it's not warm and nice. It's cold, wet and windy and it's blinking horrible. But um, we're nice and warm in here. Um, so take care. Bye bye.